Hi everyone, it's Heather with MEI Travel and I'm here at home because just like you, we have a shelter in place order going here in Southern California. However, before the quarantine started, I was down at Disneyland working on a video for you all about how to choose where to stay. And I thought, well, we're all at home and dreaming about heading back to the parks. It's a perfect time to take a look at this video because just because we can't go to the parks right now, I want you all to be prepared when we can go back. So maybe you heard at Disneyland there are a lot of good neighbor hotels that are within walking distance of the parks. And that's very true, which is so different from Walt Disney World. But they are a different experience from what you would get at staying at a Disney resort. So let's go and take a look and see what the two experiences are all about so you can decide what is best for your family when you decide to head to Disneyland. So there are some good neighbor hotels that are within walking distance of the parks. Um, some are just across the street. There's a few that are maybe two or three blocks away. And when you're selecting your good neighbor hotel, try to look for one that says that it's only a block or two away because then you can cross Harbor Bowl Boulevard right here and walk down to the Esplanade. I would say it's probably a good 10 to 15 minute walk, but it is doable. Something to keep in mind when you're choosing a hotel is the atmosphere where you're going to stay. When you choose a Disney resort, you're almost immersed in the magic. You never have to leave, much like we're used to at the Walt Disney World resorts. The Good Neighbor Hotels don't have that same atmosphere. So if that's something that's important to you, you might wanna consider that. And you also might wanna think about the different activities that are available. If you're someone that likes to spend a lot of time at the hotel and really like a resort feel, you might wanna consider the Disney resorts. They have so many different things going on, pool parties in the afternoon, um, they do, morning stretches and power walks through the theme parks before they're open to the public. They have arts and crafts. They have movie nights out on the lawn. The Grand Californian in particular has a walking tour that points out all of the um, architectural details of the craftsman movement. So it's going to give you much more of a resort vibe and other things to do outside of the theme parks when you stay at a Disney resort versus a good neighbor hotel. So while the Grand Californian has the private entrance into Disney's California Adventure, just steps from the Disneyland Hotel is the downtown Disney monorail station, which you can see behind me. So all you have to do is take about a 30 second walk outside of your hotel, scan your park ticket, and hop on the monorail. It'll take you right into Tomorrowland at Disneyland Park. And pro tip, if you're looking to get a good boarding pass for Rise of the Resistance, you can scan your park ticket there. That's considered being in the park, and there's probably better service there for you. When you stay at a Disney resort, that brings a lot of theming with it. And while that may not seem important, it's definitely something you should think about when you're considering where to stay. The Disney resorts very much stay within that Disney bubble. You almost feel like you never have to leave the magic. You are going to see characters running around the lobby playing hide and seek and taking pictures with everybody. You have wonderfully themed restaurants. You have beautiful grounds where you can stroll around in the morning or evenings or lounge areas that you can curl up with a book or maybe a cocktail and just relax and enjoy yourself and forget that there's an outside world. Uh, it really invokes more of a feeling of vacation. The Good Neighbor Hotels are more motel style. So they have a parking lot, maybe there's a square pool in the middle, and then there's outdoor corridors to get to your room. Now, some are nicer than others. They're really beautiful. There are a few that actually have little mini water parks in them. And there are some that even offer a continental breakfast, which is a really nice perk. However, you need to do your research and make sure you're finding one of those good neighbor hotels that are close to the parks that offer the the um, the breakfast or maybe one that's a little bit more upscale. So what's really important to consider is your vacation style. Do you like to spend time at the resort pool and relaxing and exploring? Do you like to find little nooks and crannies that you can curl up with? Maybe that's in 
a rocking chair on a front porch or in front of a roaring fire? Or are you in the parks from rope drop to close, completely commando touring style, where you really only just need a shower and a place to rest your head. But those are the two different experiences you're going to get with a Disney resort versus a good neighbor hotel. And it's something to consider when you are planning your vacation. My favorite thing about staying at a Disney resort is coming back here, and sitting by the fire and just relaxing. Because after a day in the parks, my feet are on fire and I just want to relax. Let's talk perks. When you stay at one of the Disneyland Resort hotels, you get the perks that you're used to from the Disney World resorts in Florida. I'm talking about package delivery, which is fantastic when you see a souvenir you just have to have, but you don't wanna carry it around all day. And what about extra magic hours? That's the big one, right? We love those. Out here in California, one of the theme parks is open to Disney Resort guests one hour early every morning. And that is huge, especially if you wanna go on Rise of the Resistance, I cannot tell you how valuable that extra hour was to me. Uh, by the time I left my room at the Grand Californian, I the line to get into the parks just for general opening was all the way through downtown Disney towards the Disneyland Hotel. Um, but I got to walk right up to the turnstiles, wait two minutes for the park to open for my extra magic hours. I had ridden three rides before I even had a chance to get a boarding pass for Rise of the Resistance. And unfortunately, I don't even believe half of the, the standard uh, general public line was even through the turnstiles by the time the park opened and so they most likely did not get a boarding pass for Rise of the Resistance. So if that's something that's really important to you and that's going to make your trip, I 100% would do stay at a Disney resort just to get those extra magic hours. Um, now, if you are staying at a good neighbor hotel, they have something called Magic Mornings. Uh, and this is where it gets a little complicated and I think people are confused because the terms sound so di similar, but the magic mornings are for anybody, no matter where you're staying, what, no matter what good neighbor hotel it is, if it's a Disney resort, or even if you are staying at your best friend's house down the street, if you have a three day and above park ticket, you have one magic morning entry on your park ticket. And a magic morning works similar to extra magic hours. You get into Disneyland Park one hour early. However, it's much more limited than extra magic hours. It is valid only at Disneyland Park. It is not good at California Adventure. And you only have one. And it's only certain days of the week. So as of right now, that is Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings. So it's a version of extra magic hours, but it's much more limited. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that helped break down the differences between the Disney owned resorts and the good neighbor hotels. And I really hope it helps you figure out what would be best for your family on your next vacation. I would love to hear in the comments below what you chose and where you've decided to stay when you get to come to Disneyland next. And until next time, I'm Heather, bye. I'm an agent for MEI Travel in partnership with All Ears. We'll be bringing you more content on Disneyland and Disney World in the future. So if you want to follow along, click here to subscribe. If you want to learn more about MEI Travel, click here.